Hello and welcome to the AIA Play versus Championship presented by Omen and NVIDIA. My name is the Doxology and we've got Caribou right over here. And uh, we're set for some amazing championship gameplay between Perry High School and Camelback High School from Arizona and Caribou. Tell us a little bit of how these two teams got here. I mean, just the way that they got here is just an accent as to how good this series is going to be today. Perry coming in, beating the defending champions from last year with Brophy in a four to three series, facing off now against the number three seed of Camelback, a number 13 versus number three. We got a Cinderella story and a team in Camelback that lost last year's championship to Brophy. Now looking for some redemption this year. We're going to have a great series on our hands. It's going to be a good one. We understand an upside down world, but they're writing us off before we get to the starting line. A stalled generation? Who do you think is going to fix all this? We will, because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. Of course, you give credit to Omen and, and, and NVIDIA for helping put this on. You also have to give a shout out to the Arizona National Guard. Enlisting in the Arizona Army National Guard means tuition assistance, job training, and medical insurance, all while staying close to home. Training requires one weekend a month and only two weeks of orders per year. When you become a guard soldier, your family will thank you, your country will thank you, and your future will be assured. You can contact a recruiter to find out more about your opportunities in the Arizona Army National Guard. And it's a great opportunity indeed, and we've got an opportunity for one of these teams to become a championship today, as we are just about underway for game one out of this best of seven championship. It could be Perry, the Cinderella story, or it could be Camelback coming back, trying to get themselves a championship uh, this year as we we're just about there. Now, Caribou, the exciting part of this is that as this game kicks off, it is going to be one of those opportunities for each player to shine as we've got two seniors as well trying to figure out a way what they want to do with esports coming out of this and then a bunch of juniors that have the opportunity to come back next year and shine again. So it's going to be really fun to see how these two teams play it out. Yeah, and a lot of the same looking at in traditional athletics, you know, it's okay, this is your last hurrah, right? You have to make a statement, make a stand here and now with two seniors on the Camelback squad, both of them now attending Arizona State next year. So this might not be the end of their Rocket League experience playing on a team together, but in their high school careers, like if you want to go out, you might as well go out on top of the state <laughs> yeah. championship. So you got to lay it on the line, do it here and now. You really, really want to. And I think that's what these two teams are going to do as we are just about underway with game one. The kickoff is literally just about to happen. And these two teams, the way that Rocket League hits so extremely quick, uh, each boost, each level, each layer of the rotations is going to make a key point difference. We get to see who exactly comes out on top or who comes out first. That first strike is extremely crucial in these games as uh again game one right around the corner yeah, and just looking at how these teams are going to come out you know going into this game is going to be very important because you know last week when we did the new mexico championship we started out with a 2-0 series and then all of a sudden we went to game seven we had a full force comeback on our hands and i don't expect anything else especially because of how these two teams have got here a defending champion taken out returning back to the championship and the team that took out the defending champs in Perry. This is going to be a great series. Absolutely. Campbell back in the gray, Perry in the orange, as we are four minutes and 35 seconds underway. As that first Ooh. goal sneaks through, you see the aerial from Beast, and he just gets up off the wall. Great play off the wall to let that floater. You see a couple defenders trying to get to it. Seagull couldn't get back to it, and Air was right there just in case for that putback. 434 remaining in this first game, and Perry strikes first. Now, Wind Waker just a little swing and a miss right there, but, you know, Beast getting that one. Most proud of being an Eagle Scout, which is a phenomenal accomplishment in and of itself. 
But on top of that, one of those players like you were talking about that is a junior, still has some time to play. So in your junior year, walk away with the championship, maybe? Now you're up 2-0. This is looking good for Perry. And that's Rampage right there, showing off some skills. That little sidekick, Wind Waker, can't quite get to it. But these are the, the younger guys, you know? They, they're showing up in a lot of great ways exactly how they want to do this. So Rampage helping Perry get to a 2-0 lead. Just missed an aerial with a nice Ooh. putback, but Air with an amazing save. Now Air is just trying to clear it out for Perry as Camelback now is on the attack. You see Zombie coming up midfield with an aerial, just kind of clips it into the corner. He's able to get back and get that full boost. That's a massive for Camelback to be able to have those rotations and pull the boost from the opponent's side. Yeah, Zombie and Seagull, those two players that are the two seniors for Camelback, accepted to Arizona State. So this is kind of the end all be all for them. Their last hurrah. And they're, I mean, you have to leave it all in the field. And at this point, just play like there's nothing left. I mean, sure, there's always the game one jitters. You know, you get a feel for each other, understand what the other team is trying to do. But I don't, at this point, at a state championship level, I don't know if you're going to be able to get away with that. You see a lot of boost being used by both teams. They're controlling it very well, however, maintaining good rotations. You see right there, Zombie's able to get to it. Wind Waker comes in and kind of knocks it in. We'll see if it's centered out. That's beautiful off the wall. Seagull comes up, just misses it, but Zombie's right there for the putback. Goes for the bank shot. Now Rampage and Air gets it centered off the wall. We'll see if Rampage comes through. Missed with Ooh. a demolition, but Zombie is able to clear it out just a little bit. Beast sets it right back center. And Zombie putting in some work on defense, but Rampage playing well. Wind Waker with a great move. And Air comes back. They are not allowing Camelback to have any moments of breaks right here. And that, that is key in this uh, first attack with 225 remaining in this game. Yeah, after putting a couple of goals back to back very quickly a couple of minutes ago, you know, it started to slow down at least, but the pressure has not slowed down in a sense, exactly like you said. Perry is just inning Camelback into their defensive zone, but doing very well controlling the boost and maintaining the amount of offensive pressure so that Camelback can't find those relief valves. They can't get their own back boost. They're just monopolizing possession and the boost. Camelback is scrambling for answers. As you see, Perry continually knocking it into the zone. Zombie with some nice aerial moves, but Air is right there to kind of deflect that center. And really, Rampage trying to put in some work as well. Air has beautiful hang time. And I guess you don't call him Air for no reason because he is in the air often. He is very, very under controlled. A lot of great movement is able to center it. Air kicks it back up. And uh, really, Perry is just kind of controlling the possession at this point. They're, they haven't been able to attack too hard as Zombie tries to knock that one in there. But again, the defense of Perry it's just very strong and controlled right now. Yeah, they're just maintaining the tempo of this game, and they're not letting Camelback really set the pace at all. Uh, Rampage a couple of times, as you see right there, again, coming out of the goal, coming off the line to challenge and win 50s, and it's doing very well doing so. Now, after a demo, it's just an open field down the line, and a 3-0 here, Perry's going to end up taking game one. Yeah, Perry takes game one, and you see Beast with some beautiful control. Wind Waker almost there. Tries to get the boost and then boost through, but wasn't quite able to get where he needed to be. Now with 52 seconds left in this first game, you see Air come up. He just absolutely rockets it off the wall. Rampage over to Air. Nice little center. Now Wind Waker tries to get to it and is able to get it off the wall into the opponent's zone and there's a nice demolition right in the goal however that ball was not centered enough to have a shot on goal 30 seconds remain in this first game perry is looking very very good just still maintaining this one and with you know under 20 seconds left here they're just going to end up taking game number one and this, you know, being a team that just beat the defending champions to get here, you know, all season long, they're on the way. They're going to give one up late. But at this point, it's almost too little too late. There is still a chance, you know, but 
for Camelback, they'd have to score almost immediately off of the kickoff and then do it again, for instance, in Riso. It's not going to be easy for Camelback, but the way Perry's been in control of this and the way they got here, it's a team, obviously, after watching game number one, is well-deserved in their position. And going up a game in a championship series, that's, that's a nice little confidence booster this early in the morning. Uh, with the final second ticking off, as that ball could be hitting the ground in any moment. You see both teams still fighting for it, and there it is right there. Perry High School takes game one. And honestly, uh, Caribou, these two teams have showed up in a lot of ways, but Perry just really controlling the possession that entire time, not letting Camelback have any momentum. You know, Siegel got that last little goal there, but honestly, Perry really did a great job. Yeah, they did. I mean, putting up nine shots to six, just showing the pressure. You look at the heat map, it's going to be like 75% on their side of, in their offensive. So uh, it's just a phenomenal showing from Perry. Good way to open up the series. They just have to be able to maintain and continue the success at the pace that they've set here for game number one. And and honestly, you you see the, the way that these two teams have played to get to where they are. You know, it's a best of seven. So game one, not so much. Last week, we even saw it in the New Mexico tournament. Game one seemed very dominant, and then it became uh, really, True. really close right down the line. So we'll see how Camelback might be able to make some great adjustments here as we're just about ready for game two. And I would not be surprised if Camelback decides to really push on the attack and be extremely aggressive to kind of counterbalance some of the fact that they got put on the defense very, very quickly this last game, falling behind 3-0. Yeah, there's going to have to be some level of an answer to be able to find a relief out outside of just a booming clear, just outside of just send the ball downfield, you know, mm -hmm. setting up and maintaining a possession, great passing plays, something that is more sensible and a little more under control than just a panic reaction. And right here, game number two is underway, and immediately Eric gets the ball into the defender zone, and Siegel trying to make something happen. Beast comes up, and again, Harry applying the pressure quickly. The rotations are extremely clean. You see Air with a nice shot, and then he follows it up himself, but Beast and Rampage both playing back, and that's something that Perry is doing really well as that shot almost banked off the post. And Beast comes in with a shot right wide, just to the left side, and Rampage, again, Perry, just applying every bit of pressure. Some beautiful ball skills right there by Rampage with a little kick flip, and Arrow oh. with a beautiful aerial shot comes back for the bounce. You see this ball just kind of floats up. Air throws it off the ground and says, I got my own rebound. Let me show you how it's done. Perry, 1-0. Nice little triple touch there in front of the net. Be able to just to send that in. Rampage there, basically just running the baseline and taking all of the boost from Kimmel. So they just, they cannot defend at all. They cannot keep up physically with the back and forth play between what Perry's doing. And then Air with this phenomenal control to put them up 1-0. A little bit slower than their first lead in game one, but lead is a lead. A lead is a lead, 350 remaining in this second game. You see Siegel trying to get that boost first and then play this one off the wall to kind of get it out of the zone. But Rampage says, nah, I kind of want to keep it over here. We like it over here. So uh, let's make it known. And Zombie comes flying by and is able to get that into the attacking zone for them. And Siegel comes up and stuck in the corner on the wall, tries to get it centered through. Beast is there to kind of redirect it rampage playing off the wall and you see how they just continually knock this into the corners they keep it out of that center zone which makes it really really easy for uh goals to be made yeah they're doing a great job of disrupting those passing lanes so that camelback can't get anything set up you know they're starting to get something formulated where they're not just having these booming clears like seagull does a good job there to, to bump rampage out of the way but the unfortunate, there's no follow-up from another teammate to make sure that rolls in. The defense gets there first and is able to push that outside. So Camelback starting to get the right idea, uh, and they're starting to get the game plan they want work, but they're not quite there yet. Not quite there. 2.37 remaining in this game number two. 
Airy leads the series 1-0 already, and they lead this game 1-0 as well. Rampage coming down from the top side, unable to complete that goal, but Beast gets the rebound. Rampage all the way back is able to bounce that through and honestly almost centered it, but uh, Air was right there to pick up the pace and knock it free. Now Air coming down off the top shelf and... Uh, Beautiful control. That's what I'm noticing right now is Perry has a lot of control with where they're going and where they're rotating. Yeah, their setup's really nice. And, you know, they're working very well together. They're in sync and understanding who's trying to get the passing plays. It's just a little more finesse necessary on their passing plays because the foundation's there. They just have to have the accuracy to get the pass down to the center to get the shot on. Otherwise, Perry's playing phenomenally well. And Camelback has finally found an answer to get out of their defensive zone and start to try to do something on the other end. Doesn't last quite as long as they need to, and they're not winning out in their 50s, which then would lead to these Perry possessions. But at the same time, you have to give them credit. They've made some really good adjustments as they've yes. kind of gone on the attack, and it's a 1-0 game. So with 117 remaining in this game, they're still very much in it. Uh, you know, they're, they're not down multiple goals, which gives them the opportunity to kind of play until that final second if they need to. Zombies right there, but no boost. Seagull with the shot. That goes wide. And Wind Waker coming up to try to kind of just deflect it and keep it down. But Air is right there and gets it centered. Unable to follow it through. Gets stuck in the goal. The zombie now trying to get up to it. Rampage has full boost. Is able to get all the way there. And Seagull just knocks that wide. And I, honestly, Siegel doing everything he can right now for this Camelback team. There's a chance right here after a double commit. They oh, can capitalize Zombie on with it. an open it is. goal, but Wind Waker coming back with a rebound. Zombie had that open goal shot, and uh, Wind Waker coming up with this rebound right there. Look at how close Air was to that. If, if Air had had almost any boost, I have a feeling would have got to it. And yeah, that's a real tough situation there for Perry because the double commit at midfield takes two of them out of the equation. Here, unfortunately, with not enough boost to get all the way back to be able to defend that. Good capitalization on a slight mistake from Perry for Camelback to keep themselves in this game. You see 20 seconds remaining as it's a tie game. Looks like we might go into overtime, but anything is possible as we come down to the final 10 seconds. You see a lot of ball movement as they're going to try to get this up in the air to give them the we'll longest amount of time. Siegel comes in did it. and is able to get it with two seconds remaining. And Camelback, I mean, talk about an answer. Siegel just shows up, uses every bit of boost. I mean, that is exactly how you want to wrap things up as they've got one final shot to get this up into the air. And they just knock it down yeah. immediately. And Camelback taking game two. I mean, the the honestly, the tactician of Siegel is able to get there. You see some of the saves, uh, some of the shots on goal. And honestly, Caribou, I mean, Camelback looked like they were struggling that first little bit. But they came back quickly to make sure that they were able to keep, you know, take care of it. But we're going to take a quick break and be right back for game three. And welcome back in as we are so close to seeing who is going to be the AIA Play Versus Championship presented by Omen and NVIDIA. And I'm the Doxology. Right over here is Caribou. And uh, we're calling some excellent, excellent Rocket League gameplay. 
Yeah, to start out, parry in game number one, just complete command and control to be able to come away with a 3-1 victory. And then the bounce back for Camelback in game number two, being able to answer it, a couple of mistakes from the parry side very late on, holding on to a 1-0 lead. They end up with a double commit at midfield, gives up the tying goal. And then after that, with a couple seconds, another hard over commit on the offensive front, leaves the defense wide open for a 2-1 last second goal. Camelback. Uh -huh. They found their answer. Honestly, you see the gameplay of Siegel as game number three is underway. And we'll see what type of adjustments both teams make now. I mean, it's an even it's an even playing field now, you know, best of five, basically. And so Air trying to come up, Wind Waker making a move as that was a nice defensive clear. Now Zombie coming up quick, and he's got a lot of boost. And Beast tries to just kind of keep it for a little bit. Look at that clear all the way across to Rampage. And Wind Waker's there to control it. Zombie with a shot all the way through, but Air getting some air for that rebound. Siegel coming in, and that is a dangerous, dangerous pass as Beast gets it cleared out. Zombie comes back, Wind Waker, and Siegel right here. Is he going to be able to chip it in? That goes straight up. Wind Waker just missing the rebound. Zombie clearing it all the way. Does it drop? Just a bit wide and Siegel with the Ooh. shot on go in the Ooh. corner. You see it just kind of bounce free. Oh my gosh. Uh, honestly, Camelback is applying the pressure on this game three. And expending all resources right there. I mean, over and over and over again, almost 60 seconds straight of just a rotation after rotation, a bounce after a rebound after a shot. And they put it all on the line right there and a heartbreaker that they had two really good opportunities at the end of the possession and don't come away with anything. You see the the control by Siegel in the air. Was able to get that all the way up. As there is air just basically powering himself through. You see Beast with the center. Wind Waker not able to get it. And neither was Zombie. You see Siegel was there, but air just made sure that he didn't boost through or anything too quickly. And Perry goes up 1-0 with 3.29 remaining in this game three. And that's a great just solo play that starts, you know, and only get credits for the assist. But you put two of the defenders on skates with a beautiful setup to your teammate in the middle. Air, all he has to do is just push it away from the last defender. Case in point, done and dusted. Put the goal in, put him up 1-0. Beast trying to continually attack, but Siegel is right there. Wind Waker, wow. a beautiful aerial assist by Siegel. You see the patience right there, the slow down, and then just a little bounce through. And Wind Waker says, look, I got a little English to put it into the upper left. And the Camelback has answered 1-1 with 3-0-1 remaining in this game three has Perry really wants to apply some pressure right here. Oh. Beast is there, and so is Air, but Air had to go get some boost. Rampage now there, but met quickly. Siegel now using patience, dribbling it through midfield. Beast in the corner, and Zombie comes out of nowhere, kind of hits it off the wall, trying to keep it centered. You see Beast just chip it through Siegel with a nice little pat back, but that leaves Ooh. the goal open as Rampage just comes through. And with 2.33 remaining in this game three, Perry takes a 2-1 lead. And Beast did a really good job there just at the direction to get Siegel in the air and then take him out of the equation almost entirely. Went with the follow-up for the bump. Wasn't even needed because Siegel was just too far out of the play to begin with after the first deflection. So good heads up by Perry, good awareness to be able to understand that they have positional advantage, take the numbers advantage and give him a numbers advantage on the scoreboard. Again, the boost and the control by Siegel. You see the patience on the double jump to allow a little bit extra kick to it. Air with a beautiful Ooh. shot just off the top bar. You see another shot in there by Air just kind of chipping it back and then he goes and rotates for that boost and Wind Waker knocks it wide, tries to get it clear for Camelback and now Zombie chips it through with a little bit of boost, but Air so clean, so clean on the defensive stop right there. A great control just to read that one and follow that all the way through. That's a, a great opportunity for Camelback to try to put one across the line, but Air with just the heads up play, knowing exactly where to go, 
read that one like a book. Zombie comes through, clears it out, does a double jump to see if he can get all the way down, beat Rampage. Rampage trying to get back beast. Stop. As it, Zombie looks for a flip as Seagull comes through. A little bit of a miscommunication as both missed, and now it's an open Ooh. goal, and Rampage again cashing in on those open goal opportunities. You see Beast just recognizing, if I can get this past Wind Waker, I've got a teammate who has an opportunity to make this shot. And with 116 remaining, Perry leads game three, 3-1. Three and that whole thing started with Rampage on the defense, a 1v2 defense on the goal line to be able to win possession back and then East recovering the loose ball in the corner with this single one-timer from midfield. That ball was moving. It was not going to be easy to stop. The first defender ended up missing. Oh, man, but they came right back, didn't they? Wow. Immediately coming back as the one-minute mark happens, Siegel throwing it down really hard. That was just a great read as all defenders were taken care of. And uh, you see him just kind of come through with that extra little effort to chip that one in. It's a, it's still a game with under a minute to go. We, uh, we really honestly have seen both of these teams apply quick pressure and then back off and kind of find their defense as well. Yeah, and that's, I think, a great thing both of these teams are showing, that they have the flexibility to play well on both sides. But air, that one was just a solo play. Read that one again, out of the air, and the control, just to bounce that off the wall, the double touch, and send it in, I mean, near post. It's a tough angle where Wind Waker has to get there in time and play the front post a little better, but great job by air. Air is putting on a clinic for aerial. I mean, yeah, there's a reason I'm sure his name is Air because he has controlled every bit of that movement and how they really have just communicated with each other and made sure that pretty much every teammate has touched the ball. You know, it's not just a solo situation that allows that to happen as he was able to put it in solo. But again, both of these teams are having to really play off of each other and uh, Get, get a little physical down there next to the goal as the final seconds tick off of this game three and Perry. Perry getting game three right here. Look at air, five shots on goal. I mean, that is that is honestly just how you apply a lot of pressure. Yeah, total shots seven to seven, but when you have air responsible for five of those in your team, obviously you know where that offensive pressure is coming from. Like to see Beast get a little more involved on the other side, but regardless, coming away with another victory, putting you up 2-1, I mean, you just have to, again, continue to build momentum. These are two great teams. It's not gonna be easy to, to be able to close this one out. Absolutely, and uh, the AIA Esports Championships are presented by Omen and NVIDIA. Uh, professional grade Omen gaming PCs with NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics help players take their game to the next level. Visit hp.com forward slash go forward slash esports for more information and a special education pricing. So as we get into this next game, uh, one of the things I noticed both of these teams did that is, is they tried to almost uh, hold back on their boosts a little bit more and, and made sure that, you know, they really had a lot of the capabilities on defense to boost through and become physical near that goal. We saw a couple demolitions that made it really an opportunity for both teams to make, uh, make those shots as Camelback missed a couple of theirs. But again, Rampage coming through with those two open goals really gave him the opportunity as we are underway in game four as Perry leads this series two to one. And to talk about the a little hesitance of using the boost because of, you know, wanting to save it for defense because they now recognize the talent on the offensive fronts for both teams. So, you know, playing it a little more conservative, a little more slowly might be the downfall of Perry just because we saw how controlling they were in the first game and how much <laughs> offensive pressure they put on. So if you ever slow down, Maybe that's the weakness of Perry. So they want to be able to speed it up, put the pressure on the offense, and let that person right there just put the ball in the back of the net. Honestly, as Air is their go-to scorer and controller uh, for Perry, with 4.35 remaining in this game four, as uh, Perry 
oh. is uh, gets them on the board, but immediately Zombie, you see the patience on this. Look at this between Wind Waker and Zombie. Air just missing that, and that often doesn't happen as Air couldn't get back to it. And 430, in 30 seconds, both of these teams have struck gold, and uh, it's a 1-1 game, Caribou. Yeah, those first 10 seconds are so dangerous because no one has boost. Everyone's trying to get the boost to get in position so they can set up their rotations. So the fact you're able to get one out of the gate, and Wind Waker and Air both missing on that defense was just unfortunate, but really great setup for Zombie then and Wind Waker just to follow up and be like, uh, okay, just tap it in. Just tap it in. As they say, just tap it in. Zombie coming in. <laughs> Pretty clutch there, trying to get it cleared out by Air again, trying to make something happen as that just floats through Beast with a beautiful little floating block there. That was a nice little save. I don't know if it'll even count as a save with how high it was, but uh, that might have been a shot on goal that Beast just was able to kind of read and float up and get. Again, just the defensive possession just back and forth here. We're not seeing a lot of solid offense going just Sending the ball downfield one way or the other. Just pitch and catch, playing goalie wars at this point, and nobody's winning. Not too often do we see it where both teams have full boost, but a couple times already we've seen it as uh, the rotations that are taking place. A lot of patience with 310 remaining in this game. Again, this is game four, best of seven. Perry leads the series 2-1. As Wind Waker comes up, almost misses it. That just goes wide. Oh, beast. Uh, lucky for Wind Waker on that as Air looks to control it off the wall. But Wind Waker gets it. Rampage comes in to help Air out and uh, throws it forward Ooh. to Beast. But a nice save by Zombie. And now Wind Waker coming off the wall. Air is right there to take control. You see the control that you just kind of tap it and accept it. Uh, he didn't really kick it out of zone, really just kept control. And now Rampage bouncing it off the wall midfield, kicks it up with a nice Dance, center. Can he is. finish it out? He does, as Siegel can't get to it. You see the control, watch the, the movement, dribbles it between two defenders right there, stays up and gets his own rebound to maintain control and finish it out strong as Perry leads two to one with 230 remaining in this game four. Seagull just looked like was expecting one of the teammates to be able to get a touch on just to deflect it, but just enough of a chip shot over the top. Hot Seagull sleeping a little too far off the line. A great individual effort there by Rampage. And that's the communication and the skills between the two as that comes up almost into the back of the net, but uh, it continues on. And now Camelback trying to answer back with 203 remaining. Ooh. Wind Waker comes in and gets the rebound. And that right there is what Camelback needed. You see Zombie, look at the aerial assist right here. Two defenders, looks like Air ran into Beast, his own teammate unable to boost into it to get to it. Little miscommunication possibly, or just some unfortunate timing. Yeah, positioning just caught out really for Perry right there. And understanding of that, why Camelback was able to let them get that goal. I mean, it's a good chance and you have to capitalize on small mistakes that the other team makes. I mean, Perry did it in game number two, and Camelback seems to be doing it here to keep this one tied up. The Wind Waker again. with the shot, and again, I snuck it between two defenders, and that's just honestly patience. You see him kind of kick, flip it through, and Beast almost had it. I think Beast anticipated it to, to kind of be a, a more of a power hit, maybe boosted through, but... Somehow that sneaks through and now Camelback with the lead with 139 remaining in this game four. Can they even the series up 2-2? That's what they hope to do as Beast trying to clear it out of their zone. Again, Perry in the orange, Camelback in the gray. You see the two teams battling it out for the AIA championship. Saved Zombie with a beautiful shot. Oh yeah, my the, gosh. The Camelback right now, they just, I, something changed they just turned it up all of a sudden the intensity is there and they are just not letting perry have the possession to try to get back in this game they want to maintain and control this and they're doing a pretty good job at it look at the boosts as well the boosts of camelback continually find ways between rotations to get high boosts yes. and uh, not always full but they pick up a lot of those 
smaller boosts on the midfield. And uh, that's actually really big and really smart by them to maintain their rotations and pick up those little boosts. Mm. As Rampage with a shot on goal, but that's going to be knocked wide. Beautiful save. And with 35 seconds remaining, Camelback trying to finish this out strong and take game four. There's the 30 second mark right there. Siegel comes in, chips it off the wall. Beast comes up with an aerial shot, but Wind Waker's there to keep it in the attacker zone for them. Rampage tries to get it clear. Zombie with a little floater, but Air is Ooh. right there to uh, get that. Honestly, Air was just in the right place at the right time. The rotation, the know-how with the last few seconds of this match. See that ball goes a little bit wide. Wind Waker's just gonna keep it down. Air now gets it up with the demolition, Ooh. but Zombie yep. and Wind Waker knock it down and Camelback takes game four. And let me tell you, as you look at some of these stats, Caribou, Wind Waker, eight shots on goal. The, uh, the amount of pressure that these two teams just applied to each other, but especially Camelback to, to take control of that situation and take game four. I mean, it's just so incredible to see these two uh, amazing teams from the AIA Championship. And of course, Omen and NVIDIA are proud to support AIA Esports. Elevate your game with groundbreaking gameplay and powerful accessories. New Omen PCs powered by NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics make it easy to win now and upgrade later to always stay on top of your game. For more information, visit omen.com. Caribou, this next game is going to be extremely crucial. We're down to the basically the best of three. I mean, yep. uh, these first two games uh, kind of went back and forth. The next two games go back and forth. What are your anticipations for this game five? I think uh, Camelback has done a good job because they found the answer to slow down air. And if they can do that, then they're going to do a lot better on their defensive front. They're just challenging better. Now, on the other side, Harry has to find the answer to that because, of, okay, now they recognize Air's kind of been taken out of the equation. How do we get Rampage and Beast more into the mix? Beast has had a couple of really good opportunities with open looks. It's just unfortunate been off target with those looks. On the other side, Camelback just has to keep up the pressure, shut down Air, and the rest just works out for them. As you see a demolition midfield, and I imagine we're going to see a little bit of aggression from both of these teams getting a little bit more physical. You know, I, I don't think you see them in the earlier games as much as they feel it out. And there's some good movement and rotations. You see all three of Perry players were back on defense to kind of control that. But I think we'll see a couple more demolitions as Ooh. that was just a nice opportunity capitalized by Rampage. You see him play it off the wall. All three players right there for Camelback. Nobody in goal. Seagull can't get back, and Perry takes goal number one. But then again, Caribou, this is exactly how we started last game. Yep, got to watch this first opening kickoff and see what uh, comes of it because it is very dangerous. Everyone trying to get in position, but the fact that Rampage gets the goal is ideal here for Perry to start try to get a little more in the mix on the offensive front. Just don't let it be the single aerial air show. You have to be able to try to find some passing plays. And at the end of the last game, it just looked like they were scrambling. They weren't finding the clinical passes that they needed. Hopefully they found it here. And again, both of these teams making a, a really a, a big splash as Camelback has been here before, unable to capitalize on that as Siegel with a nice shot on goal, but that's deflected wide. Zombie trying to get that centered. You see all three of Perry's players are right in front of the goal. They do not want any of these uh, easier goals or open goal opportunities to come through. And that, that's something that we'll probably see as the time ticks on. They're going to play very defensive and maybe even play time, even though they're only up one, uh, not take any over, you know, overplays or, or overexerting themselves. Uh, you, you don't want to give yourself an open goal opportunity when you have the lead. They've done very well on the other side. It's just unfortunate, you know, that last possession for them fizzled out because Air just ran out of boost, got double challenged in the corner. But their defensive rotation back is done exceptionally well to cover, to make sure Camelback doesn't find any openings. Now they might have one as Air just to swing and a miss at midfield, but there's not enough follow-up from Camelback to be able to capitalize on the numbers. But Demo here might help them out a little bit. 
Make it you two. See two demos real close as Siegel possibly just saved a goal right there for Camelback. Air chips it up, stays in the air, controls it through, but Wind Waker right there to kind of just tap it free. Beast now with the shot that goes high. We'll see if anybody comes and gets the rebound. Zombies right there. Saves the boost. Is able to dribble it forward. Rampage comes up. Knocks it right back into the attacker zone. Looking for some sort of rebound. Oh, and Beast is there. Air is there. Chip shots it through. Zombie with a beautiful save. Oh my gosh, Caribou. It's heating up with 2-0-2 remaining. A beast again, another great opportunity. Just has to get a little more velocity behind it, keep that one on target. And if it gets deflected, since right back, we saw air was there for the rebound. Instead of just having this lone opportunity from air, you would have two chances of shots on. But instead, ball just gets cleared out and reset. See Rampage coming through as that's kind of kicked Ooh. wide. Just right. And that was Ooh. a nice rebound by Beast to give Perry a 2-0 lead with 136 remaining. You see it just, just went wide. And uh, that's just unfortunate timing for Camelback as no defenders were in sight to be able to get that secondary rebound. And now, honestly, I, I'd say we'll see some, uh, some aggression from Camelback as they immediately have a demolition inside the goal. And uh, Siegel unable to get that. Wind Waker's playing midfield as well. Knocks it back into the attacking zone. Looking for some sort of center. As Siegel with the shot, that goes just high. Zombie oh, with the rebound. And that is exactly what Camelback needed was that rebound play. They went on the aggression, applied a lot of pressure quickly. You see just the communication as air was there, but unable to get back out of the goal with 114 remaining. Perry only with the one goal lead in this game five. Air looked like was just playing for that first initial shot that Beast got the deflection on. And unfortunately, just left it floating in the center. So Air could not stop the momentum to get turned around quick enough. And Camelback's able to take advantage of the situation. Shot on, but getting a little more physical out here with a couple more demos time and time again. I think it'll pay off for him. We might see some of those under a minute to go. You see Zombie trying to keep it midfield. Rampage chips it and then goes back. You see the rotation. Beast was there and so was Air. So now they're just trying to control it a little bit oh, more. No. But Wind Waker is able to get up midfield. Chips it into the corner. Stays in. Seagull there. Wind Waker and Zombie now with 30 seconds remaining. Beast trying to get it clear. That centered. Rampage is there to answer for Perry. Nice little uh, move to kind of just waste time a little bit. Wind Waker playing off the wall, loses grip, doesn't have too much boost, so can't do anything about it, just gets down and immediately picks up that 100 boost and is there with the last 10 seconds, chips it up. They're gonna try to keep this in the air for as long as possible. Seagull's got it up as the ball just hits down and Perry taking game number five. And I mean, this is uh, this is where we really are excited. You see, that was a close, closer game, Caribou, between the two teams and how they kind of combated each other. You saw some more demos, you saw more aggression, and that's honestly one of those things that I think both of us expected in this game. You see some of the replays right here. Talk to you about what these two teams were doing. I mean, just looking at what Camelback was doing, they were maintaining a lot more pressure in that game. I mean, at the end of the scoreboard, they had eight shots to Perry's five. And I think if you look at the way that they are going about this, now all of a sudden it has changed outside of where we were in game one, where Perry was the team applying all of the pressure. The heat map was completely in the Camelback defensive zone. There was really no answer to it that would lead to that 3-1 victory. After that, got to figure it out, got a feel for it, understanding air is the one that has been able to play out of the air, have this aerial control, and is that leading her. He is the front man to be able to put the shots on to get the goals scored for this team. So if you shut that down, which Camelback has done in the games that they've won, then they're faring significantly. And I think their team play is a little bit better on their offensive zone. On the other side, Perry, they're just taking advantage of small mistakes and overcommitments from Camelback. Air finding these open opportunities is getting the shot to get the goals to score. But Rampage is doing so well on the defensive side to clear that ball out to make sure that Camelback does not get those opportunities. And altogether, I mean, 
Harry has little things they could improve on as does Camelback. But this is just exactly the series I expected between two championship caliber teams. I mean, these are two championship caliber teams as we are underway in game six, possibly the final game if Perry can finish it out strong. What a story, too, to be able to really make a name for themselves coming in from a 13 seed, taking yep. down Brophy Iota, who was last season's champion. So, I mean, you look at kind of the, the storylines between these two teams as well. Both have a lot to say about themselves and and really make a name for themselves, finishing out the last uh, couple weeks of their school year. Yeah, and on the other side of it, you know, they were here last season facing off against Brophy and unfortunately fell short in that series as well. So to be able to make it to championships back to back seasons is a good sign that your program's doing something right. But you don't want to be the team that loses back to back championships. So you have to find an answer here in this game, and you've got a minute without giving anything up. Especially when you, you got tears on your squad, uh, you know that they don't want to go out with an L. Definitely don't want to. You see that ball just kind of bounced through. That was a really, really dangerous. 335 remaining in this game. 5-0-0. Zero, zero. This is probably the closest game, no scores early on uh, that we've seen. And you, you can really kind of get the sense that both of these teams Feel each other out, feel the momentum, feel the movement. Uh, they know the rotations a little bit better. They're able to read the passes and a lot more of the defense as Air just kind of floats that. The beautiful control didn't boost, just kind of taps it and recognizes, hey, you know what? I'm just going to let that kind of just float, just float over. I mean, th that's that's what we call the touch, you know? You know, in basketball, when the, the player holds the hand down, after uh, the shot, that was just beautiful as Perry takes the first goal with 310 remaining in this game six as that was a dangerous opportunity. Floated by Zombie, Air is there using almost all of his boost to make sure that wow. he is in between the ball and the goal. Oh, Wind no. Waker with a shot on goal, that's oh, no. still floating. Beast comes up, knocks it free, and Camelback applying a lot of pressure right off the bat. That stays in the defensive zone of Perry. They can't clear it out. Seagull there. You've got two in goal and now Beast and Rampage on a push. Tries to chip it over and that oh. does go right over Wind Waker. You see, that's the, the danger of two players recognizing, hey, if we're able to get one good rebound, we can take it all the way to the house. The control. Perry. 2-0. 2 238 remaining in this game six. And that's just a very quick transition play. And that's all it took. I mean, it, like you said, so fast to go from one end of the field to the next. You have a commitment on the offensive attack from Camelback. They can't get back in time. Wind Waker, the last line of defense, caught a little too far forward. And the finesse from Perry and the two goal score, just a couple of little chip shots, smooth floaters. They've done so well just to go around the defense. Arrow probably should have had that one too. The Wind Waker trying to do something for Camelback. Gets it all the way into their attacking zone. Seagull now chipping it back in. Zombie comes up, gave up a little bit of space. Wind Waker is there, uses a lot of boost to make sure that he deflects that out. And now they're trying to find some way to get back on the attack under two minutes to go in this game. And you gotta think about it. Perry is one minute oh. and 45 seconds away from being champion after being a 13 seed. An incredible storyline for Perry and where they're at right now. They're just 90 seconds away from it. You know, they've had a couple opportunities there. Now, this game could be a 4-0 scoreline uh, had they got final touch on it. But the amount of time that Camelback has spent on this side of the field and put Perry on the defensive rotation repeatedly is mildly concerning because it's only a matter of time. You throw enough darts at the board, one of them's going to hit. And there's Siegel trying to find a way to make something happen. Uh, with 116 remaining, Siegel with a nice move. And again, Siegel's been kind of that go-to player for Camelback. So they're still yep. in it. And I mean, you really got to kind of look things through as Perry taking down Brofile Iota in the semifinals. Cool. Trying to get through Zombie with a beautiful save there. Beast applying pressure. Rampage coming through, missing it. Air is there, but has to get Dangerous. back on defense. Look at that play. And again, I mean, Perry taking down Brofo 
I, I, I mean, Brophy Iota is is just one of those powerhouse teams statewide in Arizona, and uh, that's one of those things that you really, really want to uh, kind of pinpoint the power as Rampage comes through, gets the rebound, and uh, makes it a two-goal game again. Great capitalization and patience right there. Rampage just staying home, watching where that ball's going to go, watches a couple defenders take themselves out, but to give credit, I mean, Brophy Iota, great teams. You said the powerhouse of esports in Arizona, and Harry took them down in a full seven-game set. They're 40 seconds away from a six-game set in the championship. As the Cinderella story, I mean, I, I know time's a little weird in Arizona. They don't do daylight savings time, but <laughs> we're not going to strike midnight, it looks like. <laughs> Just might not. 30 seconds remain. Perry leads by two, and you see them on rotation. Rampage trying to basically just waste time. Hits it back into the corner now. Rampage and Air and Beast all come up. This could be an opportunity for Camel as you see Zombie make a shot on goal. Everybody gets back. 10 seconds to go before Perry could be crowned the AIA champion as the last few seconds take off. Wind Waker with a beautiful shot, oh. but that just hits the ground. And Perry High School is able to win game six as well as the championship. And the crazy thing about that scoreboard, 10 shots to seven in favor of Perry. On the other side, Camelback had six saves to only four for Perry which is kind of mind-blowing to me in the sense of how often Camelback was on that side of the field. I yeah. really feel like there should have been a lot more shots on. There should be more saves credited to Perry because of how much time Camelback was there. Siegel had so many good chances, had so many opportunities, so many good looks, and they just could not come away with the goal. The defensive rotation, the pressure was able to be relieved from Perry. They did a phenomenal job start to finish front to back. Start to finish, they were able to really take care of business and they are now crowned the aia play versus champions presented by omen and nvidia and with that i am the doxology that's caribou and we are going to be back later for more uh competitive rocket league but we're going to take a uh, break and that'll be all for now so appreciate it and we will see you all next time